If you have your Bibles, turn with us to 2 Kings, chapter number 7, verse number 3. 2 Kings, chapter number 7, verse number 3. Hallelujah. And whenever you get that one verse there, just go ahead and stand up on your feet, or whatever you would like to stand on, and we will read this together. You know... Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I'll just leave it at that. I'll just go ahead and read the scripture. And go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. We preached on this. I just got to give a little bit of introduction. It's probably been a couple of years back. And something happened yesterday, and we're going to preach on it again today because I think it's going to be some excitement in here. Hallelujah. 2 Kings chapter number 7, verse number 3. 2 Kings chapter number 7, verse number 3. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, allow that Holy Spirit to ask the same question to us. Why are we sitting here till we die? Oh Lord, but you're going to give us Strength and mercy, God, to arise and to go do what yes. you have called yes. us to do. We give you praise and glory and honor. I ask you, Lord, that this word would be encouraging and strengthening today. I thank you for those that are here. Lord, that it finds a place in our heart that we might not sin against you. That you, your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And we give you praise and yes. glory. In Jesus' wonderful name, and everybody says amen. And amen, you may be seated. Well, don't just sit there. Amen, I just told you to sit down. I know, I know everybody. Today, I'd just like to take a few minutes just to recognize when we get through 2020, I'm not going to get a t-shirt made. I'm going to get a suit made. I made it through 2020. Amen. Victorious, and what didn't take me out made me stronger. Amen. 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 I don't think there's ever been a year in the history of the world other than the day Jesus gave his life that was more impactful. Amen. 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 We begin to preach this. Just let me go back and just give you a, just a quick reminder. You remember that it had become so expensive you couldn't even buy a donkey head which has no property for cooking or anything. You just boil it. That's all you can do to make donkey head soup. And it was outrageous. And then dung, dove dung, was selling because people could not afford anything. And it was even selling at a price that, was, that people were buying it. And there was a prophecy given that by this time tomorrow, you'll be able to come here and buy anything for a little of nothing. But they were in a famine, folks. They were starving to death. Everybody, seemingly, was hungry. They're going through this difficult time. Now listen, this is where, and many of you will remember this scripture. The one lady told the one lady, said, look, we're going to starve to death. Let's Cook your baby first and we'll eat your baby and then we'll cook my baby second. Yep. And then we'll eat that baby and then we'll at least live a little longer. Yep. And the, they cook the first baby. And the mama come looking for the lady with the baby that was still alive. And that's where you see in the, that they bring them before the judge. And they said, let me cut the baby in half. And the mama that belonged to, to the baby belonged to said, no, just let her have it. Oh, so that's right, let me have it. The judge says, that's the real mom right there. Because she would never want her baby to be cut to pieces. The Lord gave me this, and I preached it at every, at least every church that I've been at, I preached it during our business meeting. That same scripture. Because if you don't love this church enough to be willing to give it up, then they'll want to split it into pieces. Tell me that won't preach, sister. 
We're splitting our churches right now over stupid stuff in this world when Jesus said, go win the world. I was riding on my lawnmower, or the church's lawnmower, it's not my lawnmower. It was mine at the moment. I was riding on it. I began to look and realize that I had been searching for a word for a word for almost four or five months. And I was searching for a word that could kind of get the way I feel right now. And I was riding on the, the lawnmower cutting grass, and I get some of my best inspiration cutting grass. And the Lord said, What's happening is the enemy's amplifying what's happening. Like this. He's amplifying what's happening. How many knows that sometimes the Lord has to teach us things by sight, but sometimes he has to teach us things by our ears as well? Yes. How many remembers the prophet that said, as his servant was there, well, the enemy is greater than we are. And he prays and said, Lord, let him see the real army. And he saw their little bitty army and then the army of the host of God behind. And he saw that God was greater. Yes. We're about to see something this morning. The enemy wants to amplify the things that are wrong to be louder than the things that are right. Yes. Wants to amplify those things that agitate and irritate. And all that we get out at the end of the day is agitation and irritation. Instead of fulfillment and peace and hope and prosperity. No matter what happens, God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And if I'm going to make it through, no matter what happens, I must be walking with God. Hence last week. Because this is still talking about walking with God. Now we're going to go on just a little bit further. The four men that I'm referring to were four lepers. Now get this. The prophecy had come. These leprous men were at the entrance to the gate. They didn't really know all the prophecy. They just knew they were starving and dying of leprosy and could not go in the city because they were unclean. And so they're sitting there. And here's what I want you to understand. God is orchestrating this from different people. It wasn't even the same people. And so here we see four leprous men, four leprous men. And if I could say this, we're going to get to it at the end of this service. There could have been no lower degraded person that God could have used on the face of the earth than a leper. Right. According to God's own word. Aren't you glad that God can use the lowest of lows? Aren't you glad that we used to be the lowest of lows? But now, thanks to the Lord, we're no longer down there. Yes, amen. <laughs> we just need a new, we just need to realign our vision, folks. <laughs> because without a vision, people will perish. And right now, we don't have vision. Amen. They're dying of this disease, starving. And can I tell you today, the church is dying of starvation for the word of God. We give dramas. We give everything. And there's nothing wrong with any of those things. But whenever they begin to replace the Lord. Let me tell you something. I love teaching today. But the Bible said by the preaching of the word. By the foolishness of preaching. And all you hear today is teach, 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 teach. But the Lord said by the foolishness of preaching will men be saved. You teach them after they get saved. But get them there. They need some preaching. Somebody say amen. amen. I've been waiting to say that for a little bit. They sat there without knowing that there was a miracle just in the next few moments. They sat there without knowing that God was still in control. They sat there without knowing that if they would move, so would God. Now, can I tell you, if that is the leprous men, can I tell you, the church needs to do the same thing. The church is sitting there watching like everybody else when the two angels say, why stand you there gazing? The same Jesus that came down to you will be the same.
same one that after he is resurrected out to the right hand of the Father, he will be the same one. Yes. This same Jesus. Listen, I, I read what Brother Tommy said this morning, and I got so excited. Oh, the church's purpose ain't changed. Ain't nothing changed about anything. Jesus is still on the throne. God's still in control. We're going to win in the end. Let's get busy getting more in. Amen. They've forgotten that God, we might as well not say they, we have forgotten that God is in control. Not the denomination or the association that we belong to. They're sitting there. We're sitting there. I could sit down and I'd sit down. We're sitting there on padded pews. Waiting on a man to make a move. Yeah. Or for somebody to bring us revival. Yeah. When God said his revival's there the whole time. Yes. Oh. Sitting and waiting and dying the same way the leprous men was. But not recognizing the miracle is sitting in here with us and his name is Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Folks, the church has strayed away. I don't even know if we can call ourselves a Christian nation anymore. I'm just being honest. But I will tell you this. Whether she is or she isn't, the church better not cease to pray. That's right. I'm going to tell you something. I've read Revelation and I've circumvented that book for so long. But it said some stuff's coming. And it says it's going to be some difficult things. And only those that are watching and waiting will see his return. That's right. Okay. They're away from what Jesus did for them on the cross. Just sitting like the four leprous men at the entrance to the gate. Starving and sitting and waiting when all the time being surrounded by the enemy. Sitting, waiting to see what the enemy would do next. Do you remember what I told you a couple of weeks back? Don't let the enemy wake up saying, what's the church? What am I... Don't let the church wake up saying what the enemy is going to do to us, but let the enemy wake up saying what is the church going to do Amen. to me today. Right. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you here, I've had a year full of the devil. Amen. And I'm tired of it, and I'm kicking him out Amen. of my life. I might not can kick him out of everything else, but I'm kicking him out of my life. Amen. Okay. The church, it's us. It's God's people. Folks, if we're not smiling, nobody's smiling. If we're not hopeful, there's no hope to be had. Refocus. Re-identify. 2 Kings 7 and 4. If we say we enter the city, the famine in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. Doesn't that feel like a, uh, uh, I know it sounds kind of beleaguering that they're going, saying that we just need to go. We're going to die here anyway. We're, we're probably going to die there, but peradventure, our enemy might take us in. Amen? That's faith, folks. It might not be a lot, but that's faith. We can sit here until we die, or we can go to do what God called us to do. To stand up, to walk with God, to stand in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the difficulties. The very words of faith. How can we as Christians give up? How can we quit? Faith demands that we hold on. Yes, amen. A little bit longer. Hope is on the way. Yes. Help is on the way. Think of that scripture. We'll enter the city. We'll go in. Church, by faith, we're going to continue to walk. Yes. With faith in God. Believing and trusting His word. So what do we do next, Brother Todd? We continue forward. I can tell you this, and I'm just being going to be honest with you. There's a couple of times during this year, I've wanted to sit down and quit. I 
I'll give you the same information I got when the insurance man come over to the house. Church has got hurricane insurance house gone. So I'm thinking, huh, that's odd. I got a back back here that the floor's not finished. I got a roof over here that needs to be put on. It's leaking. You don't think you want to sit down and quit sometimes? But in the midst of it all, and I was being a real pill and pistol to live with about yesterday. Lord, come walk in the door. He says, why are you worried about things that I control? Why are you worried about things that I'm supposed to worry about anyway? He freed me up, folks. Thank you, Lord. He freed me up to realize that you can either be under this thing or you can get on top of it, but you're going to be on either or the other. So whenever I was going out and listen, I'm still thinking in my head, the amplification of what the enemy's doing is louder than what I'm hearing in faith, in my heart, of what God is saying. Whose report are you going to believe? I shall believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Amen? Amen. I'm going to paraphrase this next part. 2 Kings 7, 5, and 6. So they started walking towards the enemy's camp. And as they walked, something happened. A miracle took place. When they got to the enemy's camp, there, were, there was no one there. They had all fled in fear for their lives and left everything behind except running away themselves. You see, as the four men walked, the leprous men walked forward, the Lord amplified their footsteps yep. so that the enemy thought that a mighty army was coming upon oh, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> oh, I was sitting on the lawnmower and the Lord said, you just need an amplification Amen. in your life of who I am. Praise God. Amen. 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 Can somebody say amen? Don't let the world amplify greater than what God amplifies. Don't let the world be louder than what the truth is in your heart that you stood on and have known up until this point, and it's going to be tested and see you through this as well. Think about it just for a moment. God amplified their feet. And the enemy got up, run out of their tents, left their horses, their donkeys, all the food, all the gold, everything that they had taken and had throughout the years. And now whenever they walk in to the enemy's camp, there's nobody there. Why are we worried about the enemy when God can make him flee? And what I mean by worrying about him, let him worry us to death about things that we cannot do anything about except pray. But can I tell you what the Lord showed me? But we hadn't prayed. We see the problems, but we haven't prayed till we tarried, till we prayed through, till we got it behind us. So in fear, the enemy fled. And in walked the leprous men, and they began to feast on what was left behind. As a matter of fact, if you read in the scripture there, it says, well, let me, let me go ahead and get to this part first. They got up and they acted. They did something with movement, with faith. No matter what happens, we just can't sit here. Yes. The same thing for the lepers. Four men is the same thing for the church. Don't sit there. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Yes, 
Sometimes we forget what God has done for us. Sometimes we forget how in the middle of the night God healed our body. Yes. Or God saved somebody or saved us. Amen. That in the middle of our darkest hour, God came walking into the situation and turned it around. Yes. He moved the enemy out of the way and lifted you up. Sometimes we forget what God has done. And how God has brought us through in the most difficult times of our life. And to realize that God is still here. And the church has to stand up and quit being cold and indifferent. And be on fire for God again. Yes, amen. I can tell you this. With the mess that's in the world today. If we get the power of the Holy Spirit moving in this building. They'll start coming in. Because people is looking. For something that's real. For something that has more than what we find in this life. And the answer is in the Lord. How God saved our children from sin. How God showed up at an old-fashioned altar when we prayed through and sought the face of God. And He altered our life. With no one else to turn, they had we begin to see it's easy to get cold and indifferent. And I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm not telling anybody in here that the church is in a backslidden state. What I'm telling you is the church is backsliding. Amen? But if we catch ourselves, we can remember the things that God promised. Some of us today, we've got children that's not saved. We've got people in our families that need a miracle from God. And I'm going to tell you something, church. A long time ago, I was pastoring a church. And something happened in that church. And there was two people that they just didn't get along. And so they was having a difficulty one service. And so the next week I scheduled to have a meeting with them to come in and for us just to kind of sit around and just kind of get everything out and open and see what's going on. And I'm just going to tell you the, the, the highlights of this. There was animosity towards both parties. But both parties needed God to do something in their life. And they might even be connected. And I told them this. I said, if I wanted God to do a miracle for me, I wouldn't be doing that. I'd be loving my brother. Because God won't do a miracle with ugly. In church, we got to make sure if we fall out of the ugly tree that we don't hit every limb going down. And I'm not talking about outward ugliness. I'm talking about inward ugliness. It is a problem in America, and it is a problem in our churches, and it is a problem on social media. Yes. I'll leave it at that. Kind of got quiet in here a little bit. Verse number 9. Then they said to one another. Now, you remember I said that they had kind of got some, some stuff together for them? Then they said one to another, we're not doing right. This day is a day of good news. And we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore come, let us go and tell the king's household that where the famine's going on, the ones that put them outside the city, they're going to go tell the good news. I want you just to think of this. Sometimes we get so focused on ourselves and we forget that the church is here for the world, for the lost, and those in need, and not for the saved. Amen? Amen. We've made the church nothing but a place for people that are saved to go and feel at home. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. It's fixing to get real up in here. 
It's for the poor, the sick, the lost, the hurting, those in need. But listen to what I think happened. They remembered their own suffering. How they were sitting at the gate of the city. And how they were hungry and sick and dying. They were moved by compassion. And they said, we've got too much here for us. We need to go find somebody else to share it with. Not knowing that there had already been a prophecy given by God that was going to say, by this time, tomorrow you can buy anything. Amen. But God was setting it up for some, this miracle to take place. Folks, I'm afraid that sometimes as a church, we have lost our compassion for the lost. We have forgotten what it feels like living in the spiritual gutter and at the bottom of the barrel. Amen? Because when God came, got me, I was as low as I could go. Amen? Sometimes we get brought out of those places and we forget about where God brought us from, there's one thing you better remember. You better remember where God's brought you from, and you better remember where God's taking you, or you're going to get lost in between. Yes, amen. The Lord is speaking, yes. and he's amplifying himself in this needs of the world, and he's saying, I'm going to give my church the ability to show this world my glory. Amen. God chose outcasts to bring about his glory. Yes. Think about that. God didn't go get the smartest people except save Jesus and all. But if we look, whenever the Bible says, here's four leprous men, I told you, there's nobody that is going to be any more disrespectful to those men because of their condition. They're going to be disrespected, but God chose to use what we may call the unusable. But can I tell you, God, when he chose the 12, he chose ordinary people. And can I tell you this, his church is full of people that are Ordinary people, but do extraordinary things through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God sometimes chooses the outcast to bring about his glory. The disciples were outcasts. The church is full of outcasts. But praise God, when we get saved, we are no longer outcasts, but we belong to the family of God. Yes. And now, every promise that's in the book, every promise that is from Gen Genesis to Revelations is a promise for you and me. Yes. If it's a promise given to a child of God and we have met the conditions of the promise, then that promise I can say is mine in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise God. How many is ready to trade some of those sorrows for some blessings today? Amen. 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 We're almost finished. God can and will use anyone and any. He used four leprous men. I can also show you in the Bible where he used a donkey to talk to a man. Amen? Yeah. <coughs> Supernaturally, God can use things that we do not even understand to do the greatest of all. God can take a man by the name of Samson and take the jawbone of an ass and kill a thousand men. Don't sound like a weapon to me, does it to you? 
but he was using the anointing and the power. Oh, if we could get into this, Brother Jack, and that's right now. Come on. <laughs> Can I tell you sometimes, Samson, if you lay your head down in the world's lap, you're going to get your hair cut off. Yes. And you're going to lose the vow. You know why that's so so much I guess whenever you say in anguish because people I see and I have saw in the past and I know God will show us in the future where we have been used mightily of God and he just wants you to know he's not finished with He's not finished with us. Amen. I was reading something the other day. It was just talking about teamwork. And you know what? Whenever we become a church and become a family, whether we sink or swim, we do it together. Amen? Sometimes the Lord got to thin out the herd of the 30,000 men so he can get down to the 300 that he wanted at the beginning. Amen? So what I'm telling you, there's some things in this world that we do not understand what's going on and how things are. But if you consume yourself or allow that to suck you into that vacuum, that's where all your attention will go. Amen? I'm going to tell you something. By no means am I telling anybody that until we get to heaven, it's going to be easy. But I'm telling you, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. And all I have is you. And all you got is me. We're going to make it. We're going to encourage. You know, we talked about the salvation of the of the church. <laughs> And that should be our our purpose and the, the, the greatness of what God wants to do inside of this church. But for the children of God, we edify one another, we build one another up, we strengthen one another. And whenever we become the family of God we're supposed to be, there's nothing the enemy can do Amen. to us. Yeah. Amen. Right. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Hallelujah. The amplification. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. The needs that are in this building right now. The amplification of God. The power and the anointing of God to scare the enemy off of that situation or that circumstance or that difficulty. To deal with doubt and fear and unbelief. But have faith to trust God. I'm going to trust you, Lord. I know the symptoms might be there. I know there might be a bad report. But I'm going to believe your report today, God. I'm going to pray for healing. I'm going to pray for deliverance. I'm going to pray for salvation. I'm going to pray, God, for your spirit to fill this place. And begin to fill our souls with the power of the Holy Spirit. The amplification of God. Now listen, the next day. The next day, what had been prophesied come to pass. And I'm going to tell you this, Revelations is coming to pass. It don't matter what this world does. It doesn't matter what tries to stop God. Revelations is going to take place. Amen. That's right. And I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do as a child of God. But once I do all that I can do, I'm going to turn it over to the Lord. And I'm going to begin to walk in faith. And I'm going to begin to believe God for his promises are yea and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't think just churches can do this thing on their own. I think churches are going to have to join together. 
I think we're going to have to see a unity amongst everyone in this body of Christ. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, those that have needs right now. Lord, that right now you will amplify the power of the Holy Spirit, God. And it will begin to move into those circumstances and situations in our life. And God, if it's sin that needs eradication, God, Lord, then you will bring in an anointing that's greater than the sin. Lord, that if there's something in people's lives or people's hearts that, Lord, we're bound by, that, God, you want to come in and break those things up and set us free today. Lord, you have not saved us that we would come back and get bound up again. You have set us free to live in freedom and to walk in the promises of God. I've done the best that I can do on preaching this message this morning. And now I release it over to the Holy Spirit and over to you this morning. However the Lord has touched your heart, whatever part is ministered to you right now, or maybe it's something that I need to work on, whatever it may be right now, I'm going to open up these altars. And if you want to come around the altar, if you want to kneel in the pew where you're at, but let's get along with God right now. And let's allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us as we begin to pray.